Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and our study of Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55, titled, Mary Doth Magnify the Lord. Your questions, comments, or prayer requests can be sent by email to bbfohio at protonmail.com or send those along with any check or money order contributions addressed to Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. You can also donate at bbfohio.com using the PayPal donation button. And now we begin our study of Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55, titled, Mary Doth Magnify the Lord. This is part one of two. And so, what, are, what, is, what is our modern world, their latest attempt to destroy my kids? Oh yeah, that's what basically the current events updates all about. It's yeah. also, sometimes it's good news, like this case, our president's fixing some things. Oh, Amen. Wow. And then since the news doesn't tell you the news and they just want to program you to think like they think, we have to have these kind of things so that you know what's going on. And um, what he's doing is reversing Obama's pro-sodomite policies that hurt women and children um, and target and places like that need to do the same thing. But he's uh, dumping the Obama transgender shelter rule, which allowed any man who claimed to be a woman to go into a women's shelter. And they had some um, uh, situations because of that, but I didn't want to go too long with this current it's update. But the story here on One News Now says, President, by the way, that's a good source for news, One News Now, ONN. Um, President Donald Trump is fixing a problematic transgender rule devised and implemented under former President Barack Obama that forwarded the LGBT agenda while putting battered women and girls in shelters uh, at risk of being sexually assaulted by male predators claiming to be female. Um, it would eliminate an Obama administration rule in 2016 requiring that shelters allow people to enter based on their gender identity. The Obama rule turned shelters for the homeless and for abused women into a battleground for the transgender rights agenda. In other words, they put the uh, sodomite uh, hang-ups and psychotic issues above the health of the women. Um, and that's what it says, they're putting women and kids safety above an agenda is what Trump is now doing under the Trump administration's Department of House Urban Development led by Secretary Ben Carson. A propo proposed rule is now under consideration to fix the problem left by the Obama administration that continues to leave vulnerable homeless women and children in shelters endangered by male sexual predators masquerading as women. Um, it would uh, protect those women um, by letting federally funded shelters consider a range of factors including the biological sex of the person, not their claimed gender in deciding whether to provide lodging to certain people and so forth. So um, that's w this is why I, I call Trump's presidency, even if he doesn't really get a lot done when it comes to things like the border and, and things like that, it is a reprieve, it stopped the sodomite agenda and is reversing some of these things along the way and he is also packing our judiciary with uh, real Americans. Amen. What Obama, uh, thankfully, he was lazy and he left about 150 vacancies when, he pres when his presidency ended. But um, when he did put a judge on the bench, it was an anti-American fool. Uh, we call them liberals. And they hate the Constitution. They despise it. They w and that's why when they get on the bench, liberals r uh, make law. They don't just interpret the Constitution. They, Roe v. Wade was produced by liberals. And they went back into the 14th Amendment and found a right to kill a baby in the Constitution. And so that's the kind of people Obama was putting on. Now Trump is putting on people. Now, not all of them will be great because they, can, you know, some of these guys, they get on the bench and they show their true colors. But uh, what we want isn't a Republican judge. Um, and that, that could be just as bad as a Democrat if it's a rhino or whatever. 
We want a constitutionalist. That's what we want. And that's who uh, he is putting on the benches. So um, that's just the fact that it wouldn't have happened if anyone else were president um, be, as far as in the general election. Now, people like Ted Cruz, um, Rand Paul, they would have done some of the same things. But I also, uh, in our current events update, want to recommend a source. Um, Islam is constantly referred to as the religion of peace. Um, those who know it know it's the religion of pieces. <laughs> They'll blow you to pieces. Yeah. But um, if you go to the website, put the word the at the front of it. The religion of peace dot com, lowercase, no caps. And this website gives you the raw facts on the global impact of the cult of Muhammad. And so um, that's just a resource where you can bypass the censorship of our news media and the censorship of social media and go right to a place where you know it's not fake news. Because uh, listen, folks, don't just go out there to some conservative website. A lot of them are run by liars. They put fake headlines. They, they you know, they, they embellish and all that. There are some that are good, but you have to, just like any preacher, Acts 17, 11, you're to test what you hear by the Word of God, and that's the way you should do everything when it comes to what you're seeing on the news and everything. There's a screenshot of what you see when you go to the front page, thereligionofpeace.com, and um, that's just the top part. You go scre scroll down, and you'll see um, they'll give you history, this day in history, but they'll also give you other history if you look you, the drop-down menus is articles about the history of Islam, the, the facts about Muhammad, um, the Quran, and all that. This is a great source you could spend weeks just studying that website, and you'll get things that you will not get on ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, or even Fox, um, RT, uh, News, what is it, what is that other one? Uh, well, Newsmax, you get a little better, and that, we have that on DISH. We get Newsmax TV. That's a good source. One American News, OAN. One News Now, that we just looked at. There are some good news sources and good conservative sites as well. Breitbart, most all the time, is a very good source. Um, uh, Daily Caller was founded by Tucker Carlson. That's a good source. I tell people we don't watch much news and we don't watch much Fox News, but we do watch Tucker Carlson on Fox News. And uh, he's probably, I think he's the best program on TV. Tucker Carlson, if, if you uh, get a chance to see him, I, don't, I can't remember, we DVR it, so I'm not even sure, is it seven or eight that comes on? Eight? Yeah, it's a oh, yeah. A study in the Gospel of Luke, we continue, we pick up in verse 46. Mary doth magnify the Lord, is what we've titled this. We're going to go through uh, Luke chapter 1, uh, verses 46 to 55, is what we'll cover. Beginning of verse 46, I'm going to read the even, and I want you to join in with me and read the odd numbered verses. Verse 46 says, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Amen. All God's people say amen. amen. This uh, passage we just read is sometimes called the Magnificat. And uh, that's not just by the Roman Catholics, but uh, that's, uh, that's not a Disney movie. Um, 
It's a Romish name for this text that we just read. But the name is actually taken from verse 46. If you look there again, it says, And Mary said, My soul doth what? Magnify. Magnify the Lord. That's where Magnificat comes from because Mary is magnifying the Lord here in verse 46. And uh, that we, I don't know, much else needs to be said about the uh, rosary <laughs> um, and the things they do with Mary. But I just want to again incur, encourage you, don't let the heretics scare you away from the Bible. Amen. And don't let the heretics, in this case, scare you away from Mary. Mary is a wonderful woman of God. The mother of our Lord. She was giving, given the blessed opportunity of carrying the Son of God in her womb. And we'll still have more to read and study about that. And that ought to be the bottom line reason we do what we do when we come to church, but when we live our lives. It is to magnify Jesus. I mean, that's the main point. Um, the reason why we are intent on um, exposing false teaching and exposing error and, and preaching against unrighteousness is because you cannot magnify the Lord if you're not doing what He says. Amen. And He has called on us to expose the works of righteousness and have nothing to do with them. Uh, works of unrighteousness, I'm sorry. Wow. We are told that in, in Ephesians, is, we studied that. And yet, Christians, many Christians don't even want to hear it. And they're just like, I just would rather not hear this stuff. And oh, I just want to hear good things. Well, that's also a mark of apostasy. Jeremiah said, the apostate said, speak unto us smooth things. And so, you got a lot of empty seats around you today that should be filled with people who know better, but they have chosen to go to churches that will speak smooth things instead of preaching facts, truth, confronting the world situation and informing the saints. Thankfully, uh, I, I just um, I sometimes amaze when I think about it, but thankfully we are in a situation where even though, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of, there are empty seats here in Worthington, but uh, our last live stream is more than 200 people uh, watched that. Amen. And then when it went out in an edited form, another couple hundred people, and that's just been in a couple of days. Then it goes out on the radio and several thousand people. And then it goes on BBF Ohio Radio. And there's anywhere from 40 to 200 people listening at any given time. So if over a period of a month, there's thousands of people listening. And they, they check in every month more than 100 countries. Check in to BBF Ohio Radio. And um, I... You know, I've got to stop and say, welcome to your first church service, Ezra. <laughs> For those who can't see it, it's uh, our little grandbaby being held by his mother. Yeah, yeah. If you want, yeah, you can stand up there. There. Is that good? Olivia's soul doth magnify the Lord. Charlie's soul doth magnify the Lord. Wonderful blessing. Amen. And now as they raise that child in the Lord, they'll magnify the Lord in doing so. Everything you do, if you want to, everything you do, you can magnify the Lord. And, uh, it, I'm, and again, I always have to say this, I'm not up here saying, just like I do. I'd like to be able to stand up here and say, I, everything I do, I magnify the Lord. And the Lord said, you better shut up. Amen. Don't be saying that stuff. Blame me for all that stuff. <laughs> uh, but there are times, you know, and I try, but there are other times where I don't. But, you know, what you do is you set your so sights on obeying the Lord and fulfilling His Word. And when you fail, uh, Stephen, you have to watch his study this morning. He talked about what happens when you fail. You can lose reward and it can hurt your relationship, but if you turn around to the Lord 
and uh, repent and confess your sins to Him. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Your fellowship can be restored. We should take a moment and compare Mary's words to those of Hannah. Um, Hannah is a mother in the Bible, but she's in the Old Testament. Back in 1 Samuel. So go there. 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2. We're going to just start in verse 1. And if you paid attention as we read our text and then listened to the words of Hannah, you can certainly see that they were motivated and moved by the same Spirit. Um, verse 1 says, And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiceth in the Lord. She's magnifying the Lord. Amen. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. Can you hear that already? The comparison between Hannah's words and Mary's. Now, join in and read the even with me as we read the next nine verses. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. The bowels of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. And that might be bows. I pronounce it. The bows of the mighty men. Verse 5. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread. And they that were hungry ceased. You see there the rich and the poor thing again. Yeah. So that the barren hath borne seven. And she that hath many children is waxed feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord, the Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and He hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of His saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. There's, uh, it's interesting, you can actually uh, type those out or copy and paste and print them out side by side and read them together. It's just a, an amazing uh, similarity between the two. Both are magnifying the Lord. And they magnified the Lord with their words. They also magnified the Lord with their life, with their deeds. Um, the Webster's Dictionary, um, we have a copy up there if you ever want to look at it. It's pretty neat. Uh, defines and magnifies a verb to make great in representation, to extol, to exalt in description or praise, uh, to extol, to exalt, to elevate, to raise in estimation. Um, man, that's, that's the major issue, I believe, among um, Christian preachers, uh, teachers, uh, and Christian artists, musicians. They are all about elevating themselves. Their name is in lights. And everybody goes and hears them, and whether they're preaching or singing, and it's all, oh, you're so wonderful, yes. And it's all about them, and you want to touch them and shake their hand and get an autograph and get a picture with them. And, and even some of the ones who try to kind of knock that stuff down, it still gets, um, it gets tough. And some of us, I know, some of us have even good preachers, good teachers, uh, or you know, fundamental Bible believers. And we've gone to see them, uh, and after it's over with, as one of the things I loved about um, uh, Peter Ruckman, Dave Hunt, Chuck Missler, um, uh, Tom Horn, 
uh, Noah Hutchings. Uh, there are a number of these guys that over the years I met, and they were not full of themselves. Uh, David Hawking. I was listening to some old tapes that uh, Brother Doug let me borrow. And uh, he, David Hawking, I called him, I called up the uh, school he was a professor at. And I told the secretary that, um, you know, I was wondering about something he was teaching, and I'm going to get into all the details. And um, so I was wondering if I could talk to one of the teachers there. I didn't think that he would get on the phone. Sure enough, she says, well, hold on just a moment. And I thought she's getting another teacher. And all of a sudden, this, hello, who am I speaking to? And I'm like, that's David Hawking. <laughs> I'm talking to David Hawking, <laughs> you know. It was natural to kind of get a little bit excited about the fact I was talking to David Hawking. But then he says, as we're talking, he says, oh, you know what, all these guys. I was actually asking him about a, a guy who had a radio program who thought way too much of himself. And uh, David Hawking says, you know what, Greg, we're all just men. He says, uh, these, some of these guys just get so full of themselves. He said, we're just men. I'm no different from you. He said, I had to get up and shave and take a shower and brush my teeth just like you did. I put my pants on one leg at a time just like you did. Yeah. And, man, I'm telling you, that, I really appreciate that because most of the guys you see on TV today, man, they are so full of themselves. And, you know, some of these guys like Kenneth Copeland and all his uh, cohorts, like that Raging Cajun and, and uh, they call him uh, Duplantis, Jesse Duplantis. Oh, yeah. And um, what's her name? Joyce Meyer. They all have to have their own personal jet. Millions of dollars spent just so they don't have to ride on an airplane with all the peons. That's what it's about. And um, that's why, you know, we don't hesitate to name these people and tell you, don't send these people your money. You know, the Voice of the Martyrs building a $25 million, you know, headquarters and gospel for Asia. I think there was, was about $15 million or something like that. Just ridiculous. No excuse for that. But why are they doing that? Because they're magnifying themselves. They're not magnifying the Lord. And this is just the key. If you want to live a good Christian life that pleases the Lord, there you go. <laughs> I mean, if you're magnifying the Lord, guess who's not being magnified? The only time you should be magnifying yourself is when you're checking your face for blemishes in the bathroom mirror. And when you're doing that, you look at that face and you say, you, you're my problem right there. You're the one in my way of really pleasing the Lord. So what do you do? How do you do it? You decrease. And he must increase. Magnify the Lord. And our purpose is not to magnify man. That's why I tell, you, I tell folks who, uh, whether it's here online or whatever, tell people about our ministry. Don't tell them about Greg. They don't need to know anything about me. They need to know the website so they can get the free Bible studies. They live in town. They need to know about 91.5 FM. Saturdays at noon, Sundays at 9.30 p.m. on 91.5 Freedom FM. <laughs> That's, right. That's what They don't even know about me. They tune that in. They don't, even, they don't even have to know I exist. They turn that on at noon. And last week it was John Albaugh. Yeah. And uh, Steve's going to be on there one of these days. Amen. And the only reason I haven't put him on before, you know, we're trying to have continuity and I'm in the middle of a study or something, but it was good timing. For John this time, is a good message, of course. If it wasn't, I wouldn't have put it on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I didn't get on there. and I just I, told, I let him know it was John teaching. That's it. But what you get, sometimes we are, Now, Brother John Allball is a man of men. He is a man who has been all across the world. He has passed out tracks in how many countries? And he is a father of how many? Four? Four. <laughs> Just making sure. We only have two here now. And his family, you know, they go on and on about the person. And, and I know you experience this because it's really bad in fundamentalist churches. 
they'll get to introducing this guy and they want you to think he's the next uh, Jack Hiles or, or the next Clarence Lar uh, Larkin, Clarence Sexton or the next Peter Ruckman or the, you know, whoever their clique is. And then when that guy gets up there, he's like, oh, I just, he, he spends the first 10 minutes of his study introducing himself and thanking everybody in the room and on and on it goes. And before you know it, you're like, okay, we're supposed to be ending in five or 10 minutes and you haven't even started with your introduction yet. And that happened so many times when I was in the churches to do that stuff. And it was the reason it happened was because there was so much focus on the man. <laughs> Everybody's hungry. Job says this, I love this in Job 7, 17. What is man that thou shouldest magnify him and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him? Uh, that's really been devastating to people who put their eyes on a man and they think, oh, he's the, he's the man. Oh, and they, I always talk, you talk to them about the Lord and they'll start talking about that man and then something happens and he falls. Or something happens and he switches doctrine and starts preaching stuff you know isn't true. And then yeah, you see people just crash. Shipwrecking because they put their trust in a man. I am over and over trying to tell you one thing in particular is on this, on God's green earth, this book is where you should put your focus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Not on Greg Miller. You say, I put it on Jesus. You can't know Jesus outside of this book. Amen. It's in this book that you know about Jesus. We're warned about false Christ and another Jesus. How do you know? You know because if it don't match this book, it ain't the real Jesus. Our purpose is to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean that as we as people and we as a ministry. And if you are having, if you're struggling in your life right now, your relationship with the Lord, your walk with the Lord, it's simply because He ain't what your walk in your life is about. As soon as you make it about Jesus and about this book as the source for knowing Jesus, things will change. Amen. Things will change. Amen. Psalm 34.3 Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. Amen. 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 And we get criticized around here because we... We make so much about the Bible and we, and we don't want people to use corrupt new versions and we want them to have the infallible King James Bible in English. And the reason is because as we're told to magnify the Lord, the Bible says, and the Lord magnifies His Word. <laughs> Look over there, Psalm 138. Amen. Psalm 138. you love hearing the sound of the little babies? <laughs> I've had people say, oh, I'm sorry, he was making so much noise. I said, I didn't hear anything but joy. I'd say, the only thing I don't like to compete with is a screaming baby. Mariah's heard that all her life. That's why you always hear her running out with Gloria start screaming. Screaming babies you can't compete with. But uh, any of those other noises, it just uh, makes it sound like home. Amen? <laughs> and I mean when the babies make them, not when you make them. I don't want to hear you making those noises. Yeah, you start making those noises, we're going to ask you to leave. <laughs> well, Psalm 138, whoops, I'm there. Read verses 1 and 2. Let's read it together. I will praise thee with my whole heart, before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name.